This was a big deal. I had made up my mind to send flowers to a girl I liked. And the next day at school, I'd get to find out what she thought about it. What she thought about me, I mean. Would she be shocked because she hadn't even noticed me? If that was the case, she might like the flowers well enough, but leave me to wilt in the corner. But maybe, just maybe, my intuition was on target. Maybe I was picking up on the right vibes. Maybe she had been silently, ever so slyly, asking for these flowers. And not just from anybody, but from me. As a shy fourth grader, I already had plenty of capacity for worried, romantic imaginings. I knew even then that to hold out a bouquet of flowers to a girl is to put your heart on the line. But it was worth the vulnerability and the aching knot that inevitably forms in the stomach was part of the fun. Recently, I packed up Vandolph the White, my converted camper van, and drove to Rocky Springs, Mississippi. Rocky Springs is an abandoned town from the 1800s whose ruins are situated along the old Natchez Trace. A little Methodist congregation still meets once a month in the only building still standing, an ancient red brick church with a graveyard where honeybees buzz from a hidden recess in a cedar. I'd gone out there to escape the light pollution and catch the Perseid meteor shower. My alarm woke me at 1 a.m., and I stationed myself in the deep night under starlight. I waited and watched. One shooting star became two, three, ten, twenty. By 5 a.m., when I finally turned in for the night, I had seen 77 shooting stars. Samwise Gamgee found hope in the sight of a single star piercing the sooty cloud rack of Mordor, and I'd been given a superabundance. All that beauty felt like a declaration of intent, a kind of lover's proposal. All those stars tingling like bright bells down the ringing halls of time, as if time itself might be an aisle for a bride. But those halls rang with a strange quietude, as if behind all that beauty was someone with an aching knot in their own stomach, silently awaiting my response. My response? Could this whole world, this whole vast cosmos, in fact, be a carefully arranged bouquet held out in vulnerable hope by a great lover? If that was true, then the persistence of the Perseids, alongside every other beauty, was proof that in spite of all the soot that clouded my heart, God had not withdrawn the proposal. He was still down on one knee, and any one of us at any time could still say yes. Think of the world the Lord has made as if it were a lover's bouquet, held out just to make the heart of God plain in every beauty that you see, every star in the sky, every kind look in someone's eye. He is calling out to you through the good things he's speaking through. Maybe there's a story that you've heard that opens up an aching in your heart or something like a light behind a door has made it through the cracks to where you are. There's a lump in your throat, and the tears come to your surprise, like there's some place that you belong with someone who loved you all along. Because every, every heart born on earth is so thirsty to be loved, but every heart gets so beat up till it's lost out in the hurt. 
and the heartbeat of our song as we try to get it back is the same tune that the Lord is singing back to us. Now, there is a highway through this world that opens like an aisle for a bride. And you can hear the song the groom has made threading through the patchwork of our days. There's a table like a ring and a king down upon one knee. Here, the blood and body speak. Make the whole world our wedding feast. So that's the song, Every Beauty uh, from Only the Lover Sings. And this year we're going through each song, each little chapter um, and lyrics leading up to the release of the third book of this trilogy, which is going to be called uh, Where the River Goes. So this is book one, Only the Lover Sings. Book two is A Tale of Two Trees. And then later this year, uh, the third one is coming out. So thanks. Hope you enjoyed that. You can find the song streaming everywhere, Spotify, Amazon, or my YouTube channel. My website is matthewclark.net. And uh, we'll keep doing this every week. Thanks for tuning in.